We'll be back with this next one. If you are at home, glued to the TV or your laptop or your tablet or your phone, get somebody else to make the cup of tea, get somebody else to get you the ice cream. Don't go anywhere for the next 50 odd minutes because this one could be the cracker. This one could be the game of the day. Scotland versus Wales, the two best mixed teams in Europe going head to head. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Well, here we go then. This, in many ways, has been the final that everyone has been looking forward to. It's the mixed open gold medal match, and it's what we expected right at the very start of the tournament. Scotland take on Wales. Here's how Scotland line up. Christina Tullock, Daniel Fitzgerald, Stephanie Tullock, Alicia Green, Hannah Smith, Finley Lockhart who got that buzzer beater in overtime earlier on against England. Cameron Livingston, Marshall McLeod, Charlie Brett, Callum Anderson, Colin Anderson, Michael Short, Christopher Ragg, James Tweedy, Leah Glading and Shona Campbell coached by Robin Kinsey. For Wales, it's Martin Seymour, Anna Melmoth, Louis Trays, Katie O'Neill, Morgan Williams, Jane Knight, Sam Pryor, Gareth Revel, Fionn Hewlett, Maurice Waite, Nicole Pike, Stefan Prychurch, Maurice Lynch, Sophie Trinham, Joe Kruger, and William Smith. We have got an epic 
final in Stork. We've seen some fantastic matches throughout this competition. And if the mixed openers taught us anything, it's to expect another between two of the very best teams around. Scotland have been building up to this for a, a long time. They are the reigning champions, the number two ranked side in the world. Wales, for a few years now, have been the pretenders, slowly and quietly building and making a squad worthy of contending for these championships. See there the voice of Gareth Revel, tall figure in the hat to the right, commanding his troops. We are so excited for this game. I'd like to be joined by Ben Meekin again on the commentary. And ben, this is, a, this is a game that everyone has been looking forward to from before this championship even started. Everyone's been looking forward to this and now it's finally here. How excited are you? Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, this is going to be an absolute cracker. Um, you want to see Touch at the highest level, uh, and this is it basically. Um, they've, they've fought it out for several years now. Scotland are taking it out most times, so let's see what uh, Wales can give Scotland. Scotland obviously had a really hard semi, so we'll see what happens. And they did indeed. That, uh, biblical battle really against England it went all the way to drop off it went to three versus three before Finley Lockhart found something in the tank to side past the defence at the last and we have our first touchdown Louis Trey's does not stick around for very long he is as slippery as an eel and we see there an example of why this kid is so special yeah this youngster is really talented look the step to move the defender he goes on the outside and he's got a step off both feet. He steps from left to right. Covering defender can't get there and it's a really, really good finish by Louis. There's only a few players at this tournament who can do that and he is most certainly one of them. And here's the next one. And, and, uh, Scotland rather, I should say, come forwards. And, uh, that is uh, Michael Short with a heavy amount of strapping on his right shoulder. He didn't appear in the semi-final. And now Scotland are about to square it. At one apiece, I think that touch has been claimed. And it is not given. So a touchdown for Scotland. They've squared it straight back up. It's Alicia Green in in the corner. And inside the first minute, we've already had a couple of scores. This is it's gonna be good, setting isn't it? ourselves yeah. up, isn't it? Uh, I think this is what we want to see. This is why we watch Mix. Mix is all about touchdowns trying to get overlaps on uh, boys and girls uh, and seeing just loads of scores. Um, we've got Talented people, attackers in both. You've got uh, Revel with the ball now, uh, orchestrating Louis. So whatever Revel says, Louis does. And but he's got the, he's got the skill to match it. Yeah, the two middles for Wales could scarcely look more different. Two completely different physical specimens. They look like father and son, <laughs> but in many different ways. Such brilliant players in their own right. Revel pops it out to the left and there's the space on this near side for the finish and that is what Nicole Pike will do. It's 2-1 Wales and Nicole Pike who uh, plays rugby union for the Welsh national team as well, double player and she can finish those all day long. Terrific play from Revel, great vision from Rhys Lynch and finish off superbly. Yeah, it's a nice little quickie from Louis. Uh, they know Louis is going to step so uh, Revel just stepped back in and looked to throw the long ball which is cut off there's a nice little pop ball over the top and we saw these two face off yesterday in a fantastic game in the pool stages we just see we're going to get another touchdown here we might well do on the far side it's uh, Shona Campbell for Scotland I think that pass is given forward in the end and then another 10 metres for uh, throwing the ball away so some easy yards for Wales here Scotland don't quite answer back instantly but uh, as I say they did play last night in the final game of the evening 10-9 that game finished the final touchdown came in the last minute the last 30 seconds to be precise and then Wales with a slippery ball couldn't quite get the catch with five seconds to go to tie the game Ruger picks up goes short side and this is how quick he is needs a pass but he eventually seeds the ball Eventually, <laughs> Scotland take over. And we certainly want to watch out for Joe Kruger, as uh, I'm sure he will be able to verify that he's one of the quickest around. Yes, he definitely is. I played against him in the uh, men's final two years ago, and he uh, put me to shame a few times. So, yeah, he's, he's quick. He knows the game a lot more than a couple of years ago. So, 
he's one to watch out for. And Scotland are in. And that's 2-2, and that's how easy it is at times for Scotland just to scythe through even the most prepared defences. Take a look at this from Mikey Short. They missed him in the semi-final. It might well have been a different outcome if he'd have been available on the park. Tremendous play from him. Colin Anderson with the setup work in at half and picked out the winger, Shona Campbell, who does eventually get that score, which she avoided a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, we spoke about the Wales team with uh, Gareth and Louis. Um, you've also got Colin and Mikey from the, the Scottish team, so it'll be a bit of a battle between those two. They've all got similar skills, so we'll see what happens. Find out why by Gareth Rebel. Didn't quite have the legs on it. And uh, Nicole Pike didn't get that one. Yeah, Gareth Norman throws those straight to the wing. He's known to run, but throw about 500 balls a month to get these long balls sorted. So he won't he won't miss the next one, I'm sure. So yeah, have to for a touch. There's Anderson helping on to the cavalry. In comes Finley Lockhart, who scored that magnificent touchdown to win the semi-final at the very last possible moment. That's caught there. And Wales will turn that over. Will they? No, it is a Scottish ball. Referee thought Finley was half, uh, dummy half, but he wasn't. He swept round, so it's last play. Have they got anything here? There's a step. Shona Campbell takes it in possession. And good game management there from Finley. He's put the ball on his sub, uh, sub box side, so Wales will have to go all the way to the other side to sub. Oh, they recognise there's nothing on for them there. They dealt with it well. He's moved the ball across. Only taken on one touch, there's a second. Actually pressed up pretty well, there's three, and now the cavalry comes on with Kruger. It's not too quick for his own feet for a moment there, but Wells maintained possession. Maybe an opportunity here. Steps inside, no touch there, low pass, well gathered in, and Wells dive for the line with Reese Waite. Defensive touch. It was. We've already seen some fabulous moments. This is, in many ways, one of the, one of the finals that we fully expect is quite impossible to call. Here comes Mikey Short. Look at the pace of himself and Anderson at dummy. Impossible to stop, and there goes. Shona Campbell, well just how do you defend that? The pace of Short and Anderson, um, Wales couldn't live with that. No, uh, it's all about that first pass into Mikey. If you see the uh, retreating defenders uh, being pushed back all the way, Mikey comes on with such speed, it's not, it, he doesn't need his shoulder for that. He just needs to drive in as hard as possible, split the right way uh, towards the onside player. Uh, Colin picks up at half and he always picks the right option. Um, so, yeah, it was a good, really, really good score. Well, Scotland hit the front for the first time in the match, 3-2. Didn't expect this to be close. Trey's Rebel buys it, so good to the defensive work, but Wales will get a fresh set of six from five metres out. Yeah, Wales have done their homework here. Um, we all know that Louis wants to uh, step infield, so the, the defenders wanting to chase, and then uh, Gareth Revel is cutting on him uh, to get that defender moving. Even he can slip through there. No, no, he's. Everyone's keeping really tight tabs on him here. See Gareth talking to Louis there, uh, trying to get him to do certain things. Here is Gareth Revel. Oh, lovely step. Need to pass. Still needs a pass, and there's Trey's. The double act combines again, and Wales square things up. Well, when in doubt, Gareth Revel can always rely on Louis Trey's. But then they think they're going to give to Louis, and that is a great little stud step by Gareth Revel. We've all been done by that on the line before. Um, still at his, uh, I won't say his prime age, but he's still running around and showing people up on the field. So yeah, really another really good footwork, uh, really good footwork from Gareth Revel there. And if it wasn't here, he's been doing it for so long, he's the first 
Oh, we're we going to have another touchdown, I think, there. Yes, we are. Scotland are not hanging about here. Shona Campbell already has a hat trick. And what have we got here? We've just got a sweeper play, um, middle touches, pulls this to a short side, but because the defensive winger is so high, we were able to throw the ball across the face to the winger for an easy dot down. Really has been fast and frenetic this, and here is Gareth Revel again. Just on the floor. If it wasn't for the fact that they've been doing it for so long, as the first European to 100 touchdowns ever. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you'd be surprised that for a man of such size, he has such quick feet, but here he is again. Look at the movement of Revel. In the end, just ran out of the room. But well, I think we get the ball back. Yeah, they'll get a penalty for that for deviation, I think, so they're moving in two directions before they get on side. Uh, yeah, Revel's, Revel's done it to everyone all over the world as well. He's played in different tournaments around the world. He's played in several World Cups. I think he's devoted his life to touch, so he's uh, he's obviously reaped the rewards of his hard work. Nice trays. Quick steps. Can't quite escape. You can see what they're trying to do to Louis here. He's looking to step into the open side to, to his left as we look at it uh, but everyone's trying to uh, shut all the space on, on him and himself versus short it's a great battle isn't it yeah it is mikey's a very good attacker but he's just as good as defender so gary's having a go at the 32 counties and he's unsuccessful scotland's defense has been impressive so far spend an awful lot of time in this scenario. Wales have territorially had the advantage in these first 10 minutes. Yeah, so Wales will be looking to get to the line and get some static plays, whereas Scotland are very, very good at driving out and getting some scoops with Colin, who's making the touch now, and Mikey making the touch. There's a quickness of Kruger. Oh, it's a painful one. Ooh. Mikey Short, he's already got an awful lot of strapping on his shoulder. He doesn't need to be pulled up by that shoulder though, does he? Or <laughs> tapped on it. <laughs> Looks like he's going to be okay. He's up to his feet pretty sharply. Wiping his face. Just wonder if he took a blow to the head there. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. No he's continuing on, which is good to see. I want the best players out there on the pitch for this final. He's definitely one of them. It's Revel. Dives to the line. And gets over. It's another touchdown to the Centurion. And Gareth Revel maintains this to and fro battle between Wales and Scotland. It's a really clever attack here. So you, you see the defender there, he just turns his right arm into the attacker, which gives that space on the outside for Gareth Revel to go into. Um, we're always trying to maintain our hips and keep them towards our short side. That didn't happen, so Revel uh, got on the top of it and scored. Good rank. It's Gerald now, Callum Anderson. That's where he got caught. Callum Anderson yesterday scored four touchdowns for Scotland. All very, very similar. Low dives from positions around about four or five metres out. A great finish here, similar to this. Passes it on that occasion. And uh, Scotland are rather rejected there by the Welsh defence. The fans have been building up slowly throughout the day. I think they've about reached peak. At this point, everyone wants to watch this game. Yeah, it's busy out there. When I was running over, um, trying to hurdle over a few people, obviously, my knee's not great, but trying to get over here, and there's, there's a lot of people around. And it's good to see for the sport, especially in England. Yes, well, it's worth pointing out that let's not forget England aren't in this final. That's a game in England, and the crowd's the biggest we've seen all weekend. And that's a sloppy handling there from Christina Tullock. And Wales will get the ball back inside Scottish territory. Kruger. Wales again choosing a slow static builder. And yes. Watch for the explosion. That takes him to the face. And I think it was a penalty for not walking forward uh, just before the touch to, from Lurie. Well well, Trays has scored 21 touchdowns in the run up to this final. Well 
there he is again. And there he is again. So difficult to stop for any defender when he's that nimble and quick. Yeah, his agility is uh, superb, really. Um, what he does here, he just steps on the outside of his defender. Defender's pulling a huge corner, covering middle, underneath, couldn't get there, and Louis dots down. Let's give a big cheer to this fine athletic young team from England. Here comes Scotland back. Come on, boys. Yeah. Smith, and Finley Lockhart. Quick build up again from Scotland. Touch called. Lockhart nearly in. Forced error for Lockhart. He's got a high score. He's got a high score, I should say. Most European Championships. He was swapping the ball for the one who scored in the semi final, man. Here come Wales. And Morgan Williams. And now Kruger. Fun to know that. Scotland want the ball back, I'm not sure they're getting it. I think Wales are a little bit lucky there. Um, Kruger picks up the ball, he's got the ball under the arms, he's not looking to pass it, he's just trying to get a deviation penalty. Um, but fortunately for him, he gets a hard, uh, Scotland give a hard touch away on him, so Louis comes on and does what he needs to. Goes to the line again. Touch called. Yeah. Back to the base of the attack. The ball is put on. And here goes Kruger and outside and waiting and simple for Jade Knight to finish off the attack. And Wales will take a two score lead here. Yeah, this is all because everyone's looking at Louis. Um, and then Kruger on the outside gets the ball. And because everyone's looking at Louis, everyone's compact. Kruger gets the ball, takes two steps, and throws a long ball. And Jay Knight has been one of the highest scorers for this Welsh team. Here comes Scotland. With Anderson, he's in, he needs a pass, he gets a pass, does he? Oh, unlucky lay plating. Would have been some finish. It's an interesting tactic, actually. Lay Gladen scored a hat-trick for Scotland from the wing in their game against Wales yesterday evening. Scotland haven't really used the right-hand side too much. They've used Shona Campbell to bring it in fact on the other side. Here comes Kruger. Short misses with the touch. Kruger's pace takes him away. Is he going to go all the way? Needs a pass. Gets a pass. Gets a touchdown. Wales move three clear. Fionn Hewlett with the score. I don't think it was a score. I think Mikey Touch got this touch on Kruger. As you see the referee just on our left of the screen then coming up. And calls the touch. You see when we're joining. Yeah, it has. That was where the touch happened. Wales will resume on number of touches they had previously so it remains 6-4 I think it was a penalty for deviation again I think they know Krug is looking to get through as quick as possible so people are really pouncing on him and Trey's ensures that didn't matter much anyway it is eventually a three score lead for Wales it's pretty simple Acceleration. That's just different class. Yeah, Louis just gets on the outside of his toucher. If the toucher just takes the outside shoulder away, he might be able to stop that one. But the speed and skill of Louis, he might have been able to step back. So it's, it's a really difficult one to defend. Um, I can't say it's a, an error defensively. It's just a really good attack. Rag Fitzgerald, Anderson Fitzgerald. Needed another option, didn't have one. And Wales are definitively on top here. The first 20 minutes or so has absolutely flown by here in Nottingham. We're coming into the final minute of the first half, and Wales are three scores to the good. Here they come, looking to make it four. Touch called. Oh, yeah. 
Stefan Kreifetsch. Perfect roll ball, I think. So it's a turnover. And you need to make these ones count if you're Scotland at the moment, especially if you fall back in their own uh, in the attacking half, which is looking, be looking to score. Sweep the plate. Anderson. He dives for the line. Looks pretty good. This is what he did to such good effect yesterday. And Callum Anderson has done it again. And that's a play that he really is just so good at. Yeah, he just coasts in. If you watch him, uh, he run this replay. I don't know if we'll get the replay here. Yeah, we will. Um, he just coasts in. He's in the white hat. He's just coasting. He's looking to sweep now. And look for a, such a tall lad. How low he, and how low he gets between the two middles. Yeah, it's a really good dive. Back come Wales, though. They would love to get back there. Three score leads. Trace. Oh, brilliant. Oh, wow. So good. Wow, wow, wow. That is all in the conditioning. If you watch the first five minutes, Louis steps in. Gareth normally throws the uh, cuts up and gets the ball. This time they do exactly that. So Gareth goes. Everyone follows that. Everyone's on the heels. And he walks in with it. So really good conditioning by Wales. They've obviously seen that people are following. It's a terrific end to the half for Wales, who lead by three scores. That half has absolutely flown by. We hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. It's going to continue in around about five minutes' time as the players all take a bit of a breather, and this mixed open will be decided. We're now going to hear from Peter Kilborn, who's the captain of the Irish men's 45 team. He's been with us. Joined by a very, very obviously happy Irish men's 45 captain, Peter Gilburn. And just talk me through the game that happened on field two. Yeah, it was a tough game. Uh, we played England a couple of times already this week and uh, we won one last one. So there was nothing in it really. They're, they're, they're a good side. We've played them a few times over the years, but uh, we managed to nick it in the end. We're absolutely delighted to, to win it. Um, you know, we've been on the road a long time, played in a lot of semi-finals. It was great to get to a final, actually win one. So we're, we're, we're ecstatic. As far as uh, how you've managed to keep the body going over four pretty intense days of touch and a lot of heat. Yeah, it's pretty exhausting at our age. Like we've guys in our 50s, we've a couple of granddads, but uh, we all pulled together as a team. Um, we kept the physios very busy. <laughs> four girls in the tent. Um, before every game, uh, the, the captain would ask who's who's fit. We'd all put our hands up, and then they'd say, uh, "Does anyone need physio?" And we'd all put our hands up again. So it's tough going, but uh, it's been a great championship. Nottingham has been a great venue. Um, the facilities are fantastic, and we've really, really enjoyed it. Um, yourselves as uh, quite a quite an hour for Irish touch because yourselves won on field two, and and the senior mixed team won here on field one. You know, how much is the sport growing in your country? It's really growing. Like you know, a, a good few of our team have been in the road for about eight years um, so it's, re it's really growing it's it's it, the RFU now are getting involved um, and it's, it's great to win two gold medals today like that's that's huge for Irish touch and it's obviously going to attract more people to play younger people um, and that's what we want we want the, we want the, the, the sport to grow because it's a fantastic sport to play if there's another takeaway from this week what would it be um, just touch is getting bigger and better um, like being on the BBC streamed live it's getting more profile it's a fantastic Fantastic game, um, great for fitness, great for great for, great for fun. My, everyone on our team are great friends, we're great mates, and uh, these tournaments are fantastic. So I, I'd encourage anyone to play. Oh, lovely to hear from the Irish contingent there. They're certainly enjoying life, and we, and we are enjoying it as well. From our perspective here in the commentary box, just brilliant to watch between uh, between two incredible teams, Wales and Scotland. Enjoyed some well in that first half, and it, Ben, it's 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 tough to call here. It really is because Wales are three scores up, which is a pretty healthy advantage, and they've done really well at slowing Scotland down. The static attacking plays. Scotland actually had that many attacks after the first sort of five, six minutes when they traded score for score. No, no, they haven't really. Um, they, they traded score for score and then they, they went back to the grind. What I mean by the grind is the, the driving, um, going trying to go 70 metres and scoring. That's where Scotland are very, very good. You, we saw in the first five, ten minutes when uh, Mikey Short um, comes on 
and then Colin Anderson picks up and goes short or long side with his throw or his speed. That's where Wales, uh, Scotland are very, very good. And the more this game goes on, I think they'll try and do that a bit more. Um, but if they do get some penalties, then Scott, uh, Mikey and Colin will look to uh, do their quickies as well. Uh, Wales haven't had too much driving success, but they're getting a lot of penalties, um, which is giving Wales a lot of scores. So it's going to be it's an interesting uh, dynamic at the moment. I'm looking forward to the second half. You and me both, and judging from the crowds gathered around the pitch here at Highfields in Nottingham. I don't think we're alone in that sense either. Hope you're enjoying it at home or wherever you are watching online or on the app, the UC Sport website. I'm glad you're with us. And this second half is all set. Hands up. That's going to flax it any second now. 20 minutes separates uh, Wales or Scotland from the mixed open title. I think we could get a drop off. That's my, that's my prediction. I don't think the other team wants it, but I don't think we'd mind it. <laughs> the semi final between uh, Scotland and England, where things go by. That was a drama. Oh, I don't mind it now, England are in it, so it, it's just entertaining when you, your team's not playing. Here comes Short, Scotland moved the ball quickly out on the outside, his leg lading, and she will do that all day long. Wasn't involved, we mentioned this in the first half, that Scotland didn't really use the right side of the attack, where she was so effective yesterday, and that's what she can do, a brilliant finish it, his leg lading, and she gets another score. Yeah, really good move here, Mikey just splits out on a razor, uh, Link defender comes up to try and cut that off but can't get there quick enough. Mikey gets the ball to the uh, girl Link. I wasn't too sure who that was and then it was a nice easy walk in. North Rebel brings it back for Wales. And one tries combination combined again. There's a step off. Yeah, touch is called. Yeah, that was a similar move to what Mikey did. He ran a razor so he made the touch and went to the onside middle to try and get inside. Australia is showing a straight line speed here. Goes down. A bit like what Finney did in the first half. Uh, Trey's has just put, put, brought the ball all the way over to his subset, uh, his sub box. Uh, so Wales, uh, Scotland have to work really hard to get the ball to their sub box where everyone can sub because that's the easiest way to sub. And they've done a pretty good job of doing that. Finney Lockhart is a brilliant ball carrier in that sense. <laughs> it's all right, it's only fine. Yeah, he's so powerful. Here comes Anderson. Taking over his rag. All the way out to the wing, not enough legs on that. There's it. I see a green out there on the far side. I think that went forward as well, so it's a penalty to, uh, to Wales. it over the head, it's really good handling of a difficult ball by Reese Waite. Oh, the Wales have seen the possession there. I think that was another forward pass by Joe Kruger, they're trying to keep the ball alive. Unfortunately it went forward over the halfway line, uh, the actual lines on the field help there. On come the ammunition yeah. from the sub box. A bit like Wales. You've got Mikey and Cole up here. It's their turn to show off what they've got. There we go. That's short, can't quite squeeze through there. And Mikey's very good at those picky plays the way he exits that touch to make it on the outside of the defender. Have a look at what he does here. And then a fire up wide, and there's Leah Glading again. Won't quite get down. Very elusive. Can't quite find a way through. Anderson. Reverses to short, back out to Glading, surely. Over Glading, though. It's a nice idea from Scotland. You can see what they were trying to do. Yeah, uh, fifth touch, so they didn't have any more touches. Um, Colin and Mikey were in a, a nice 33 cut, and they just couldn't complete the three and two. Let's see what Wales have got in this drive here. Oh, 
Mitic has gone already. Really by the time they can consider getting to the south box, and Mikey Short's quickly out again. He's got to defend this well, already on four touches, so Wales now uh, got one touch left. Might be all they need. Oh, and the drop there. Aaron courtesy of Fionn Hewlett. He's got to get it back. And that's maybe where. That's not Wales' strongest point, is when they're driving from deep. Much better when they've got the, the line set up. Yeah, they are much better at the static play. Um, Scotland are, are good when they're coming on at like this point. Um, and they've got only a couple of touches left to set up a scoop. So let's see what they can set up here. Clouds are oh, brilliant. That's so good from James Tweedy. Touchdown for Scotland. They're back within one. Yeah, and this is what we were just talking about, really. Uh, Scotland, Scotland like to drive up, uh, drive at Wales and make them tire, pushing them back all the way. Uh, they pick up number eight, picks up the short side, and James Tweedle dives in for the score. And Rebel tops off to Hewlett, to Rebel, Trey's, and Trey's once again exchanging passes. Chance maybe here, lovely play, and Hewlett's in. That time the handling was short from Fionn Hewlett. And Wales get themselves a score and they needed that in truth. Yeah, this is it's really clever here. Um, obviously everyone's looking at Louis to see if he can step. So what he does is feedbacks to uh, Gareth who gets shut down, but they play a second phase where they put the ball down and move it dead quickly to a uh, three on two situation with the sweeper. And they get the ball into the link hole for a score. Christina Tullock now it's with Finley Lockhart. Clouds, Tweedy, Cloud straight in. And a long ball out. Oh, and Leia Gladin couldn't quite get there. I think it was forward as well. Yeah. Referee there, Scooby. Calling uh, that forward. When I say Scooby, I mean Alice Watch on. Sorry, we get to know these <laughs> we get to know these referees and players on a personal level. So I only know a lot of nicknames. Don't know if she got the name Scooby. Maybe I'll ask you later. Uh, anyway. Yeah, maybe not on BBC. <laughs> Kruger comes forward for Wales and quick transition for Morgan Williams. And now Kruger again at pace. Williams takes over, hands it off. Out wide it goes to Pike. Forced into traffic. Scotland have defended that well. Yeah, they have. Just talking of referees, Mike Green is from Nottingham, so I just give him a bit of a shout out. It seems over in Nottingham, roughing a mixed open final, looking for his uh, level up here. So, congrats to him. Tweedy, Glading, and now Anderson. Short comes in. Short. Anderson, Anderson combo. combo. Oh, it's brilliant. Was there a touch on the leg? Yes, there was. It's nearly. Superhero moment from Paul Anderson. Trace. So the path of link. Trace takes over again. Now you see a bit more of his straight lines gets nearly a brilliant offload from Alan Melmoth. Just didn't quite have the legs. Approaching the 28th minute, and considering a score for score in the first five, it's tightened up a little bit. Yeah, and this is this was always going to happen. Scotland, Scotland love this. They 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 want to grind Wales out here. So yeah, they might be two scores down. They won't panic. Um, their coach Robbie McCarthy, he he'll, he'll be making sure they keep going 70 meters, um, pushing Wales back as they are, and just trying to keep keep scooping, keep them tired, keep them running, and. Oh, what a pass that is. Get some scores. Uh, uh, just lost her footing. An interception there, is it? Oh, I've been sliding around now. Stefan Kreifertschu nearly took that out, but unfortunate slip for Leah Glading. It was there for her, I think. Steps himself there. Mm -hmm. 
don't think are the easiest, but first time really I've seen a spate of slips. It's, uh, it's pretty dry out there. Yeah, it's dry. I just think the tops uh, is that dry that is the footing's just going sometimes. Um, from Scotland, with McLeod, options either side. There's Lockhart, touch called. I don't think Lockhart particularly likes the decision. McLeod takes over. Here he is again. Oh, what a grab! Wow, wow, wow. That is sensational. So this is a 33 ml, so middle link line. Uh, and that goes long. And that is one of the catches, dives, scores of the tournament. Alicia Green with an unbelievable dive. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing from Alicia Green. She has scored a few touchdowns in this tournament. None as good as that. Revel, Trays, he dives over to respond for Wales. And he does. It's 10-8, that two touchdown cushion is restored. And it was an important one for Wales to get. Just immediately just arrests that momentum that Scotland would have felt after that score. Yeah. Um it was a really good score by Wales, and, uh, sorry, by Scotland to start with, and then uh, Revel comes on. He only really comes on in the tack, so he doesn't do any of the driving. He comes on just for the scoring bit, and he always gets called the right thing. So uh, two two point advantage here for the Mikey Cole. Mike all the way in. He will shorts there. Touchdown. Short with his first of the game. He's been relatively quiet for a player of his ability, but he's sprung into life there. So what happens here? Mikey sweeps round, Cole picks up, everyone follows, and the ball was down. That was two twelves there. So Mikey Short, he just got the advantage over Stefan Freifurch. Didn't realise that, don't think that Short was on his blind side. No, it's a, it's a good follow play. Um, they've been running sweepers, so that follow play was, was always going to happen. It slows things down. A great mind. Ticking over, calculating. Here comes the play. Revel dives for it. Oh, he's done it again, has he? He's throwing the ball back like he has. And what's the official's call? So he's called the players offside, but then got them onside and they've made the touch. Have a bit of it. Here's the replay of it. So Rebel does really well to get into the pocket middle. Number eight steps out, makes the player de deviate. Both feet on the line, makes the touch, but they've been called for deviation, so that's the penalty. Scotland could do with a uh, shutout here just to try and get an even playing field if they go back and score. There's Trays and he's stopped. For the first time there, really, in the match. Trays and Revel not quite on the same wavelength. Again, a really little handy touch to get in. Trays, long ball out. Scotland defending this really well. That's a crucial turnover, one feels. Uh, that's touch Although four. They've got two more touches. Mike Green just said single touch four, so two more to go. There's Trays. Ambles forward. Final touch. Oh, and that is about as rare as you could possibly find. Very sprints off to allow his subs to come on. Yeah, he doesn't like to do much defence because he's so good in attack, so he gets off as quick as possible. But that was a, a really good defensive set from Scotland. I think this is where they'll start to come into the game. I think everyone's on ice skates as well at the moment. Um, I don't know if it's raining. It doesn't look like it, but... Everyone's on ice skates, so let's see what Scotland can do driving down. Callum Anderson, rag. Fitzgerald grabs that in really nicely. Anderson tries to step away, taken quickly for Fitzgerald. Anderson again. Rag tries to dive through. Scotland lose it. And we're back with him once 
score heading towards the final six minutes. Yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting six minutes. Um, if Wales can keep up this driving, get down the field as quick as possible, then like they've just done here with Kruger setting up, going short side, showing his speed, into in goal. And there's the pass, and there's the touchdown. Scotland just switched off for a second there. Kruger burst into the end zone. And this was all about, could he find the pass? Could Scotland mirror well enough to keep them out? And the answer is they could not. And it's taken really well by Wales. I think it's Stefan Kreifert who got the final touch, but Wales won't mind who did it, just that they did. It's 11-9. It's going to be a good five minutes. Anderson, short, goes for it. I think he gets it. He does. He does. So this is this is really, really good. I mean, the conditioning. So you saw the last score by Mikey Short. He sweeps on the last score and cuts in towards Cole. This time he, he pretends two and then bounces. So we call that a swingy B. And he just gets on the outside. And that's all in the conditioning from the previous score. And back within one. To and fro, it's tense. Defence is not winning here. It must be awful being a defender. There's only so much you can do against yeah. attackers like this. It's an attacking sport and that's why we do it. Revel is in again, no, touch was made. Less than five to go. Oh, no. Revel, trays, touch made, really good one from McLeod. Trays again. Really, really good bit of defending again, this time by Finley Lockhart. And Scotland have turned it over. And we'll start to drive towards their sub box. I think it's crucial now that Scotland keep every single drive that they get. They need to go 70, uh, 70 metres and making sure they get a good scoop on the back of it. Um, what they are very good at, so I'm sure they will. They've got someone coming on here. They're going to do a middle, middle drop and then we'll have a scoop. Oh, slight handling error there by Christina Tullock. But I think Scotland got the penalty. Yeah, so on the back of the scoop, um, they're looking to get a deviation. So they pull a defender back two or three metres, step back. Um, and if a defender follows, then that's a deviation call because they have to go back in the straight line for five metres. Anderson, rag. Anderson again. That was running well. Gerald, Rag, Anderson's in, straight down the middle, and with lives. three minutes to go, we are all square, I'm getting pick a winner. I'm getting excited, I think it's going to go to drop off personally, or the next score wins, I think it's going to be a right tussle, but this is a really good sweet round, you know, he's, well, defender just pulled a big corner actually, just, just ignores him. Didn't, didn't have the read on him at all. No, not at all. And Anderson... Gets himself another touchdown. Scotland's top scorer in this competition. Here comes Trey's, and again. And now it's with Lynch and Revel. Elusive from the big man. And eventually he gets touched by Lockhart. And Claxon will sound. Bang on 40. And that'll be our last play. Clock management does come into this a little bit. Wales are good at this. They're good at keeping static and picking their moments. Here they go. And a good bit of defending. But back they come instantly wide. And nearly a moment for Jade Knight. It's a really good recovery from Shona Campbell. Yeah, superb wing defence. Um, Wales had an overlap, so she shut that down, got back on side, and then shut down her winger as well. So two superb touches. It, Wings are one of the most crucial positions in this game, and if you've not got a good winger, you will concede a lot of tries, as, uh, sorry, touchdowns, as we have seen. If you do have a good one, they will stop a few, fair few as well. So Marky and Cole on the ball. 100 seconds to go. It's with Shorts. Anderson with him as ever. Here he is, Mikey Short. Ooh, the fellow was on. Colin followed him, he was in. Cameron Livingston on this near side. It's not deja vu, is it? 
Here's Anderson. Oh, oh and Christina nice. Tabbott couldn't quite bring it in. So then, Wales, you've got all of 65 metres. You've got all of 65 seconds. That's going to be good. To win it. I'm calling drop off, though. Here they come with Hewlett. They want to hit the sub box as quickly as possible. On come the big hitters. On comes the pace of Kruger. And the pace of weight. And Kruger's with him at dummy half. Does he get the touch? Yes. Oh, 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 what's happened to Kruger? Sorry. Um, no, he's gone down. Gone down. I thought originally he was just unhappy with the call, but I think he was. And then when he jumped up, he did something. Now, Claxon will go at 40 minutes. This could be it. I think I think we're going to have a drop off, but it's just the unfortunate way it's happened. Um, yeah, let's just hope Kruger's all right. I know, I know, I know how this pain is at the moment. So, yeah, let's just hope he's okay. So the Claxon sounds, and we will go to drop off. Might be an extended pause while Ryan Kruger gets a little bit of treatment, but. To be honest, it, it shouldn't be a surprise to people who've watched this tournament over the last few days if this competition, of all competitions, has gone the distance. Scotland versus Wales in the mixed open. It's been the spectacle we hoped for, and we're going to get even more of it. Oh, it's going to be a good uh, drop-off. Five, four, probably even three players. And then we take a look at one of the moments of the match, and this is, oh, this is an unbelievable touchdown take a look at this grab i hope someone gets a steal of that that is a brilliant score who was that again and that was alicia green it's as good as it gets yeah yeah she's a very good winger plays up in manchester uh, with the bbr uh, riders so sorry the bareback riders should i say yeah, let's uh, see if we can take a look at that from another angle because you just will never ever tire of watching this touchdown. It's a brilliant pass, but we, we, with the quality of the finish, we almost forget about the pass. Oh, no, I, think this is, I think this is the follow. And here we go. Yeah, so Third time lucky. Here Finley comes Finley 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 Finley. He engages all the defenders. It is a really good ball. And yeah, you can, you can say the rest, guys. It's, it's pretty good. Here we go then. So drop off rules to remind you every two minutes we start with five aside. Every two minutes a team will lose a player each. Wales on this first possession. If they score, Scotland have a right of reply and have to score. Otherwise Wales have won it. And our Wales over. Finley Lockhart claims a touch, get to touch. If Wales fail to score, and Scotland score on their first possession, Scotland are the European champions. If neither team scores in their first possession, well, it's sudden death and its first score wins. If you want drama, watch drop off touch. Yeah, it's good. Scotland know what they're doing here. I mean, they've got their defence pod on. Let's see if they can uh, defend it. Praise, elusive as ever. Yeah, they've got their defence pod on. They know what they're doing. So what they're going to do is try and get to the box, try and get their attack pod on. Um, and well, here comes Scotland. Mikey and Cole. That's, what, that's my call. Well, this is to win it if here they score Cole. in this possession. Here comes Marky. Make good ground hit. Only, only third touch coming. Livingston. Anderson with him. Fourth. Marky short behind him. Here he is. This is could be to win the game. Short waits. Picks his moment. Anderson out to the wing. Great grab. Was there a touch? I think there was. Oh, the referee's going to have a decision to make here. What's the decision from our officials? Oh, it looks like Wells is going to get the ball. Forward, Forward pass, pass yeah. yeah. So it's sudden death. Next oh. score wins. It's just like the England Scotland mix game now. How are your nerves? Up come Wales. Forward comes Trace. Livingston stops him. Claxon sounds. They will have to lose a player. It's four on four. So you, you see Scotland, they, instead of taking three players off, they've brought their defence pod on. So their defenders have just come on. 
and this is where the pace of players can make such a difference. There's more space now, uh, yes. far more space. It's unfortunately, ironically, a situation where Kruger would have been so deadly, but Wales have to do without him with Trey's out to the far side. Is this the moment? Oh, she dropped it. She's dropped it. Oh, no. What a moment it nearly was. It was Nicole Pike on the outside. We were talking about wingers and making sure they're doing the right thing, and she was in the right position. She just saw the defender come over, and she took her eyes off the ball, unfortunately. Now Scotland, once again in the position they were in a minute ago, scored to win it. Forward they come with McLeod. Rag backing him up at half. Scotland have been really clever there. They started the ball on their sub box. They've gone over to Wales sub box and then gone back to their own sub box. So they've moved the Welsh players all around uh, and they'll start to be fe feeling fatigued and tired and hope, uh, well, they'll hope that they've moved them that much that they can get on the, out the right side of the score here. Lockhart and Anderson at middle. Out it goes and is that the moment? Yes. The touchdown scored, it's James Tweedy. And it's Scotland who will be the European champions. What a finish, what drama right at the very last. And Scotland, for the second time today, have done it. This was the moment Wales nearly had it. Oh, such a decisive moment that is, isn't it? Nicole Pike couldn't quite rein it in. And from the next possession, this is why drop-off is so dramatic. This is what Scotland could do. Great work from Callum Anderson. Finlay Lockhart, the key man in the last game in the semi-final, picks out James Tweedy for the score. And what a match, what a conclusion. And what a champion Scotland up. Yeah, um, they know how to win. Um, they've done it for several years now. They were very, very uh, clever the way they moved the ball. So, yeah, really, really good. Well, we see now some of the wonderful moments that have made this game of all games so special everyone in the touch scene for months has been looking forward to this clash and i know you as much as anyone ben did it first of all live up to the billing yeah yeah and more um it was it was impressive the attacking structure from both teams was uh really impressive some truly awesome tries it really was. It was score for score initially. Wales then held a three-touchdown advantage at half-time. Scotland then roared back in the second half to make up the difference. And we went all the way to drop-off. What drama. At the last. Yeah, that Scotland team, like I say, half-time, they, they know they're still, they're still in it. Three tries is nothing to them and they got back into it. Mikey Short, captain of the Scotland uh, Mixed Open, uh, fresh from the most dramatic uh, final of the afternoon so far. Um, cliche time, but how do you feel? Absolutely exhausted. Uh, first and foremost, that's our second drop off of this tournament. Uh, two today, indeed, one against England in the semi final. Luckily, we had the legs for it in the end. Um, we were pushed <laughs> harder than we've ever been pushed in Europe, I would say. But we pulled through, and I'm extremely proud of the team. Yeah, the, you came into this tournament as uh, as very, very you know joint favourites really with Wales. You know, so for the two of you to reach the final and then put on a show like that for everybody watching here, thousand people also around the pitch, people watching at home online as well, fantastic. I hope it was a good exhibition. It's two fantastic teams. We know a lot of them uh, through our, our club scene in the UK, and I think I, w I hope I, I, I hope they would agree that it's a very uh, that was a very good atmosphere. We had a lot of respect between these two teams. Yeah, we might have been favourites, but uh, because we've won a few in our past, but that's just pressure. You know, uh, as pressure, everyone's gunning for us. And uh, they got extremely close, but I'm, I'm so happy. And uh, the amount of hard work we put in just to nick it at the end was all worth it. That's fine. We've, we let everybody play with the microphones. <laughs> uh, the the semi-final, you say, but with, with, with England, yeah. after being comfortable winners against them in the round-robin yeah, stages, yeah. for it to go to a drop-off this morning, how much, did that how much was that a, a bit of a wake-up call and how much did it prepare you for the, for the final? Well, first and foremost, they were incredibly uh, good in the semi-final. That was all them. That wasn't ours. We played well, but they played, they played uh, uh, so much better than the, than the round-robin game. So um, uh, great credit to them. However, I said to the team after that, um, that it takes more than just a touch on the field to win a comp. We spoke about how that created team unity. It created a team bond because we'd had to fight through that adversity. And hey, it worked for us in the final because we had to go through that same adversity. So I think we were prepared well.